Hello guys, today I bring you another update of the game Pocket Farm, but before we begin with the video, I have a few things to tell you. So first of all, thank you so much for your comments on the last development vlog, I'm really happy you like it. I saw a lot of comments with suggestions, which are very nice, so thank you so much for those. I also received one request for a tutorial, which is how to place the new blocks on the map. I think that's great, I'm already working on a video for that, for teaching you that, so thank you so much for that uh, request. And uh, also, I got two people to tell me to check out their games, so I think uh, and I'm just thinking about this, we could do once a week, uh, you guys send me your games and I can like take a look at them, play them, test them, and of course I would put the links to all your games in the description so that other people who watch these videos can uh, check those games out. I always think it's great to check other developers uh, games and projects, especially when they are like uh, small teams or even when it's one person, uh, you know, it feels like you're sharing the art uh, with one another. I think it's just so cool. So thank you so much for telling me about your games. And if you have a game you want me to check out and show everyone, uh, just post it in this in this video as a comment as well, and I'll be happy to to take a look at it. So all right, guys, let's begin now with this development vlog. Hello, guys. Today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how my save and load system works for this game, which I think is pretty nice and pretty simple to use. So right now I have this house here. Let me buy one house. You'll notice that I can place it, all right? Uh, I can save this, I'm saving. Um, but when I load this again, you'll notice that uh, the house is missing. Everything is there, but the house is missing. So, oh, and apparently those pumpkins are missing too. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be working on that. So to do this is very simple. First, I just need to go to the prefab of this house, which is here. Um, and I'm going to add a new script that is going to be called house item 3D. That's how I'm naming, doing my naming. You can call it whatever you want. And uh, it's pretty simple. Here for each item that I have on the, on the scene, I have a script that is specific for it. And um, this house item 3D, I'm gonna follow just what the same thing I do with the with the flower for example so I need to find my flower script flower item 3d so here uh, the flower actually works very similarly with the house when we place it we place the prefab or that 3d model on the scene so here for the flower item 3d we have very limited options uh, basically on tap we are just going to um, create a dialogue with two options rather pick it up or uh, cancel. I think for the house, the options are going to be uh, rotate the house around and I'm not gonna let players pick the house, maybe. Maybe you need an item to destroy the house if you wanna remove it. Uh, but for now, I wanna focus on the save. And right here, you see that there is no function related to save, right? That's because those functions are here in item 3D. Each, every item 3D, those are the items that we place on the scene, they are iSavable, all right? And iSavable has a, some functions. So for example, JSON. Whenever I have an iSavable function, I, or sorry, an iSavable class, I can uh, use this function to get a JSON, uh, basically a JSON object with all the information that I need to save it which in this case is a uh, rotation, a position, the, the type, and also the category, all right? Now, what happens with more specific things, like for example, the tomato plant item? The tomato plant item, uh, sorry, that's it. I need to find it, tomato, tomato plant item 3D. So here, we also, when, when we call the JSON function, you see we also have it because it's also an item 3D. Let me make this bigger. So since it's also an item 3D, we have the, we are extending the iSavable interface. That means we know we can get a JSON from this item. All right, we get this item, uh, we get this JSON as default, right? Just the category, the type, the position and rotation. But the tomato plant item um, 3D, uh, also needs to give us two more things, which is how many uses left we have on the plant and what is the progress of the growth of this plant, all right? So I add those two 
besides the base.json, all right? So I have this JSON object, which is the base.json, and then I add two more things. And then when I load this, I do the same. I load with the function from the base, and I also load two more things uh, which are specific to tomato plant item 3D, all right? Now for the house item 3D, we don't really need anything else besides what it's on the base. So here we're going to extend item 3D and item 3D is already extending iSavable. So we get this function by default just by extending that class in house item 3D. So when you have a base class, you can override the void uh, the start function, uh, but I like to include it also because I have some functions on the base class that I want to have here as well. And then here, I'm just gonna call it house. All right, I'm not going to add more functionality for now, but only with telling Unity that this house item 3D is an item 3D, now I can actually save this house. So if we go one more time to the game and uh, I try to create a house, in a second, uh, we buy a house here and we place it. Now if I save and I play the game again, the house should be there. There you go, it's pretty simple. You can save any item on your scene just by making it a iSavable type. Uh, in this case, my item 3D base class, uh, they are all iSavables. So they get saved on the scene. Now, if we wanted to have something here, like for example, the house, um, I don't know, it had some special uh, properties like lights on or lights off or door open, door closed, uh, fireplace on, all those kind of properties we would, and that are specific for the house, we would add those here. We would create, just like the tomato plant 3D, we would override the JSON function that comes from the base. We would override that. We would get, uh, wait a second. Yeah, I need to tell you I'm using JSON, simple JSON. And uh, of course I don't have any of these. So here I would add specific properties of the house or unique properties. And I will add them to that JSON. So then when my save controller wants to save the house, it's going to also save those specific properties in the JSON. And then when we load it, the house it's in charge of loading itself, all right? Uh, so the, the house would know that it needs to consider also these unique properties. So guys, if you want me to make a tutorial just like explaining how to implement a save and load system like this, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to do it. I think I'm gonna do it anyway sometime in the future, but if you really want it right now, I can uh, increase increase its priority a little bit. So thank you guys for watching. Yeah, now we can save the house finally and uh, all the things. I've been working a little bit on the game. Uh, here is some of the, yeah, like, again, this is not a tutorial uh, per se. It's more like a vlog of like how I'm fixing things. I fixed the house thing that was not being saved. I fixed the tomatoes and the pumpkin plant, but for some reason now I'm missing the pumpkin there. Uh, I should be able to get it anyway. Uh, and now another one should start to grow. So, yeah, I don't know, something weird's happening there. I can't see the pumpkin for some reason. I need to work on it. There it is. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, uh, stay tuned for more updates on the game. And I really love seeing your comments. Thank you so much for all your uh, suggestions, feedback, and everything. I hope I can finish this game uh, within one month so that we can upload it and uh, we can all play it. Thank you so much, guys. Give me any suggestions and I will see you all on the next video. Hey guys, one more thing before I go. I have been making a lot of 3D models for this game. So if you would like to see me doing time lapses of how I make the models in Blender, and again, I am not a great 3D artist, but I still can come up with different 3D models. If you would like me to do videos about that and give you some tips on how I use Blender, please let me know. I would be more than happy to make those videos as well. So thank you so much, guys. And now this time I'm really going away. Take care. I'll see you all on the next video.
Goodbye.